load up your hotshot las guns, and prepare for the drop for the Tempestus Scions are getting a bunch of new rules tomorrow. Hello and welcome back to Auspex Tactics, the strategy and tactics focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So not one but two guards rumour update vids over the course of two days. It's a very good time to be running the Hammer of the Emperor and this update will see the Militarum Tempestus be fleshed out again to be their own army in their own right once more. I did feel it was a bit of a shame for the Militarum Tempestus players who went from having their own codex to being folded into the guard with only token rules to represent their unique regiment. But now between this preview on Warhammer Community and the new Scion Doctrine traits that Games Workshop have shown off on their Facebook page, it looks like the Militarum Tempestus are going to be a lot more of a standalone force like they once were. So without further ado, let's take a look at the new rules. First of all, from the Warhammer Community Preview, we have some previews of the new Regimental Doctrine traits, which we'll go over on the next slide, because they have shown off all of them on the 40k Facebook site. For the rest of the preview article though, they've given us some other things. Each one of the new unique Stormtrooper regiments will get access to their own Warlord trait and relic, and we've got a couple of them teased here. First of all, we have a relic pistol for the Theatred Eagles. These are the ones with the same regimental trait as our Tempestus sounds have at the moment. Extra hits on sixes within half range, and it replaces a hotshot last pistol. It's a 12 inch pistol 2 strength 3 weapon that when it hits, the target suffers a mortal wound. Now, mortal wounds are pretty handy to be flinging about, and this is actually a pistol that is actually a genuinely legitimate increase in damage output. Naturally, this is going to be best going against the biggest, most heavily armoured foes around. Things like maybe Relic Leviathan Dreadnoughts, or character units that are protected behind thick armour and big invul saves. And it's going to be very much a no questions asked type pistol, where each time you hit, you fling a mortal wound through all defences. I like this one a lot, it certainly outcompetes the vast majority of relic pistols that we see cluttering up the relic tables of the 41st millennium, and this could easily be worth an extra command point relic investment to give your Tempest or Prime something else to hit the enemy hard with on the drop. Next we have a regimental warlord trait for the Capic Eagles. These are the ones that are painted blue and gold, as we can see in most of the box art for the Tempestus Scions, and we'll get onto their regiment trait in a second, but their warlord trait is Master Vox, which will allow them to issue orders to Capic Eagles infantry units within 24 inches, and it can even do so even when you're inside a transport such as a Valkyrie or a Tarox Prime, for example. So that's quite a nice little flexible one, though in all honesty, Tempestus Scions are usually pretty easy to deploy next to each other. You could just have your warlords drop alongside a bunch of other scion units and be able to use the voice of command that way. For me, I'm not really sure it outweighs the standard guard warlord traits, old grudges, and command point farming on a 5+, plus. but it's a nice to have and it could fit in with your strategy if you're thinking about flying a guy around in a plane. Next, they've confirmed that the scions will be getting a whole bunch of extra stratagems as well, as you might expect from an update like this. There'll be 14 new ones in total, one each for each of the custom new Scion regiments that we're seeing, and also eight generic ones that can be used with any regiment. This is a really decent slew of options, particularly considering the Militarum Tempestus only had access to one unique stratagem before. The two that they've shown us here today are Progeny of Conflict, which is a one command point stratagem to give a Tempestor Prime, or indeed any Militarum Tempestus character, which I don't think there are any others of yet, a Warlord trait. Now this is really nice, it's been a little bit onerous being limited to one warlord trait as a guard army at the moment, so this is a way to get another one. At the very least it sounds like this could be used to get both old grudges and 5 plus command point farming on the field at the same time, which would certainly be a big boon to a guard army. And of course we'll have all these new Militarum Tempestus traits to pick from as well. I'm sure for one command point, at least one or more of them are going to be very useful indeed. So a good stratagem here. I hopefully think it will see play. Also, it really gets me hopeful that we might see a similar pattern stratagem for the regular Imperial Guard, as it will be great to have more options for Warlord traits on the table, particularly as we often have a lot of command points to spare, and paying one for a Warlord trait would really be a bargain. Finally, we have the Precision Drop stratagem for another one command point, and you use this stratagem in the movement phase to deploy some Scions out of a... Aeronautica Imperialis transport with the Grav Shoot special rule, such as a Valkyrie. Basically, this is used to get the Militarum Tempestus squads out of the Valkyrie via the Grav Shoot insertion special rule, 
and instead of having to set up 9 inches away from enemy models, they can instead just set up 5 inches away from enemy models. Now 5 is a very fortunate number to be setting up away, because it's less than 6. If you're within 6 inches, then you're close enough to have your melter guns gain the additional d6 and pick the highest, as per the melter special rule. And also it's less than 9, which is the distance that you'll need to rapid fire those hotshot last guns. So if you had a big squad of Skyons inside a Valkyrie, this will really make them fight to their absolute fullest potential, and certainly unlocks the melter gun, and maybe even the flamer, as more reasonable choices for your Scions. Also, as one extra little benefit, provided the plane moved at least 20 inches, you don't lose any models by rolling a d6 for the grav shoot insertion. That's a nice little bonus too. Overall, I think this stratagem makes Scions in Valkyries a lot more viable. It'd be interesting to combine this with the Vigilus Detachment that gives you benefits for doing the same thing. Although, to be honest, it just looks like an upgraded version of the stratagem precision drop from that formation. So I presume it'll be superseding and deleting that stratagem. But that's okay, because it is both better and also freely available to all Scions, not just ones from that formation. So let's take a look at the different regiment traits that we have for the Scions. We have six of them. We already mentioned that the Theatred Eagles on the top left have the exact same one that the Militarum Tempestus Scions do at the moment. If you're shooting at a unit within half range of your Scion unit, an unmodified roll of 6 scores an additional hit. It's very nice that this is now an unmodified roll of 6 to hit, as it means that their trait isn't just countered by your opponent having a minus 1 to hit from any of the myriad sources. So even that one is slightly improved in my book. Next we have the 55th Capic Eagles. Their doctrine is mobilised infantry, and the benefit is twofold. Firstly, you can move and shoot with infantry without suffering any penalty to moving and shooting your heavy weapons. Basically, this is only really going to be any good for the hotshot volley gun, making it certainly a more viable choice than a Capic Eagle's force. And secondly, if the model has disembarked from a transport in the same turn when it's shooting, then you add one to the hit roll. I quite like the idea of a cheap and bloodthirsty Capic Eagle's force jumping out of a Valkyrie armed with a bunch of hotshot volley guns. Hitting on twos is certainly very nice. Though again, this drop out of a transport will also synergize incredibly well with plasma, meaning you can avoid blowing yourself up with your own overcharged shots. Overall, not too bad, but it does kind of restrict them to one style of play, which is getting out of either Valkyries or Torox Primes, rather than some of the others which are a bit more flexible, and still get their benefits if they're just dropping in from Deep Strike. Next we have the 43rd Iotan Dragons, and their doctrine is Crack Shots. A simple uncomplicated, add 6 inch to the range characteristic of rapid fire weapon models with this doctrine. So this is going to be a great one for hotshot last guns, deep striking out of reserve, as it means that you'll be able to rapid fire them all, even first thing out of the drop, which means they'll typically have double the damage output of a regiment that didn't have this trait. This certainly makes them a ton more viable, particularly now that the hotshot last gun sounds are quite so cheap. If you were just running a cheap and nasty small battalion with Scions in to capture some objectives, and you weren't wasting anything else on them besides giving them las guns, I could see this being a very strong choice indeed. It certainly doesn't hurt plasma guns as well. Having an extra 3 inch on the rapid fire means rapid fire 15 inches, so they'll have a bit more of an option of what they target after they drop, and they don't necessarily need to drop within 12 inches, which can sometimes be important, say for Space Marine or Spec Scan and the like. It's a shame that this 6 inch range is only applicable to rapid fire weapons, would have been very nice on flamers and melter guns as well, so it really does force you in terms of one style of play. But that style of play is perfectly valid, so a good one in my opinion. Next we have the 9th Iotan Gorgons, who to me look very similar to Kazakin in terms of their armour. Their doctrine is Resolute Heroism, and is a bit of a variant on the standard Sion's doctrine that we all know and love, in that when infantry models are shooting with this doctrine, any roll of a 6 will score an additional hit, provided they're targeting the nearest unit to them. So for some weapons this is going to be better, say for example things like melter guns and hotshot las guns that are just dropping in from deep strike will like this a lot more than the standard within half range get additional shots. It usually is going to be easy enough to target the closest unit to you, particularly coming out of deep strike. However, unlike the theatred eagle's predatory strike, for the extra hits on less than half range, this one only affects infantry, so won't help your Torox Primes if there are units that you're running at the moment. Overall, not bad, a nice simple damage boost, with a very slightly different flavour to the Theatred Eagles. Next we have the 54th Cyan Jackals, and their doctrine is Death from the Dark, and this one is a morale manipulation mechanic. 
Basically, each model destroyed by an attack made by a model with this doctrine counts as two destroyed models in terms of the following morale phase. Now, leadership mechanics in general aren't my favourite, the main reason being that some armies just absolutely do not care about leadership, whether it's entirely vehicle armies such as Imperial Knights, very small elite units with high leadership such as Space Marines, or certain armies that can just ignore it altogether, such as leadership 30 orcs when they have enough models, or fearless tyranids with their synaptic web. All of those examples aside though, this doctrine is actually reasonably powerful when you're dealing with an army that can be affected by morale. Say if you're targeting a space marine squad with multiple silent squads from this regiment, if you manage to kill four of them, then the last one is pretty much guaranteed to flee, and they shall know no fear or not. And even if you just kill two or three, there's still a reasonable chance of inflicting some morale casualties, even on space marines. Now morale mechanics can be easily countered by the two command point auto pass morale stratagem, but if you're forcing your opponent to do that multiple times in a the game, then that is going to have an effect on what stratagems and powers they can activate. Whether it's worth giving up the more uncomplicated damage boosts of the other regiments is a trickier matter though. Against a lot of foes it's definitely not going to be, but against certain units this could actually genuinely be devastating. I think that this one could be combined well with Torox Primes, as they have enough shots to actually stack a lot of wounds through and hopefully cause some mass casualties on your opponent. For example, if you did manage to cause 5 guard casualties on your standard infantry squad, then the rest of the infantry squad is almost certainly going to entirely run away unless your opponent burns command points. It is very powerful in the right circumstances. Finally, we have the 133rd Lamdian Lions, and they have the regimental doctrine of prized weaponry. And this one's another good one. You improve the armor penetration characteristic of models with this doctrine by one. If you want AP-3 hotshot lad guns, then this is the doctrine for you. And certainly plasma guns and hotshot volley guns are going to find this helpful as well. It'll be strongest against high armor save armies, such as space marines, which we're seeing everywhere these days. And it also really amps up the damage output of the Torox Prime, with all of its weapon loadouts, but particularly with that Torox Gatling Cannon, which will really enjoy being strength 4, 20 shots, AP-1. That'll clear some infantry, and no mistake. It doesn't specify ranged weapons here, so this will also affect your melee. Funnily enough, your silence will be AP-1 when they're fighting in melee with other opponents, which might well catch some people by surprise. If you are fighting enemy targets with a 3-up save, and you're using your standard hotshot las gun weapons, this will be a solid 25% damage boost in terms of the amount of wounds that you get through. And it only gets better if, if the 3-up save models have any cover at all, making them a 2-up effectively. I think that this one's probably one of the strongest if we look at the field, my favourites are the Lamdian Lions prized weaponry. It's a nice uncomplicated AP-1 is great, and I could certainly see roles for the Theatred Eagles, the two Iotan regiments as well. I think that the Capic Eagles are somewhat restricted, particularly as they do get a damage buff, but it's only on certain units for one turn. And I find the Cyan Jackals very interesting, in that they'll be really powerful in some matchups, but really rubbish in others, so they're a bit more of a mixed bag for me. Overall, I'm really happy to see that the Scions are getting some really good attention, and I can't wait to see all the other options that we have for stratagems tomorrow. If we do get full details of the greater good, I'll certainly have a Guard and Scions review out within the day, and I'll certainly be looking to make some individual videos on tank aces and custom regiments over the coming week, so feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics if you'd like to see any of that. If you've been enjoying my content, feel free to support my Patreon. These videos do take a fair bit of time to make, and the Patreon account is what lets me keep on focusing on this as more of a full-time thing. The link's in the description below if you're interested. There's also some other benefits, like getting early videos, reports from any tournaments I attend, and the occasional prize draw. And of course, a big thank you to those already supporting the channel. Again, thanks for listening. I'll hope to see you guys with full details of the greater good tomorrow.